Hey guys, a little nerd news today. Nerd news episode number two, I believe. So what's the nerd news? DevOps is too damn complicated. Yes, some people out there are starting to recognize that the DevOps infrastructure, if you will, the DevOps tooling that we see out there is becoming a little unwieldy, a little bit too much for some people, actually for a lot of people. And so now we have people coming out with solutions to simplify the development operations. That's what DevOps is all about because it's becoming uh, a time-consuming part of development. One of the key things about software development is you want a quick turnaround. You want to be able to write code, deploy, test quickly, write code, deploy, test quickly. That's the whole process of development. And if you have any stages, any steps in that process that slow you down, this is not good for development. Now, don't take this as me saying that DevOps is bad. Not at all. DevOps is super important. and It's uh, source control and checking code in and out. It has great utility. Uh, number one, you back up your code. Number two, you have a way to return to a version of the code that works if you introduce some bug that's hard to determine what it is. Etc. 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 So DevOps becomes even more important, far more important, far far more important when you have more than one developer involved in the project. That all said and done, what I have noticed with modern DevOps, it's becoming unnecessarily difficult at times. I think a lot of people are implementing DevOps infrastructures and processes for small projects when these infrastructures or when these operations are more or less better suited for very large projects where you have many developers involved and lots of complexity in terms of your deployment environments. Most projects being built out there are not nearly that complex. I've seen this phenomenon before. Nerds have a tendency to overcomplicate things. This is just the nature of being a nerd. I saw this the first time actually in the 1990s in the Java community. Java became more and more and more and more complex as more and more nerds jumped into the game. They started adding frameworks, they started adding protocols, they started adding uh, processes into Java to the point where there was a big revolt in the Java community where a lot of people started leaving Java and that actually caused the rise of Ruby in fact in the early 2000s. At some point, the Java community did self-correct to a certain extent where real-world processes and frameworks replaced the ivory-towered uh, designed frameworks. I've talked about this before where EJB 1 and 2 were replaced by, uh, with EJB 3, whereas EJB, EJB 1 and 2 are, were technologies that were created in the ivory tower uh, nerd uh, enclaves and uh, basically a bunch of nerds who have uh, a lot of uh, diplomas by their name but evidently not too much street coding experience. Their specifications did not work in the real world. They tried to cover every contingency possible and nobody actually used it. So street created, if you will, uh, libraries and processes, replaced those. So the official Java spec basically became what people were using in the real world. Um, we saw that actually with um, HTML5. HTML5 was designed not around ideology like XHTML. XHTML preceded HTML5. XHTML was a purity-based markup language. And uh, what do I mean by that? But what do I mean by that? It had a certain set of principles that nerds were really getting into, and usability of the language and flexibility were uh, pushed to the side in favor of uh, nerd purity. And that got in the way of proper development. And then the HTML5 spec came out, and it was based on reality, and of course, Reality-based infrastructures and technologies always win in the end. So X, HTML fell. HTML5 is now the standard. 
And so with DevOps, it's too early to say where exactly it's going to go, but I'm telling you that there's an unnecessary level of complexity from my point of view. Not in all projects, but in many. And uh, in some cases, it could be more difficult to learn DevOps than it is to learn how to write code, uh, which is getting kind of stupid, in my opinion. So there you go. That's the nerd news. Once again, we see a similar pattern in technology. You see uh, technology stacks becoming increasingly more complex for no good reason. And now we're starting to see the inevitable revolt where people are starting to say, wait a second, this technology is actually getting, getting in the way of productivity. We got to do something about it. So we're starting to see that with DevOps. I'm going to look into it a little bit more at some point, and I will update you on what I find. That being said, don't think that this means I'm saying, hey, you can't use DevOps. No, no, no. you got to use DevOps, especially if you're working with larger organizations. You have to do source control, yada, 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 yada. But again, this stuff becomes more important as you become a, uh, as the project becomes complex or as you have more than one developer involved in a project. And uh, that all said and done, if it's just you, you're doing simple web apps and web design stuff, this is not really important whatsoever. All right, we shall talk soon, bye-bye. Hey guys, just one last thing. I am looking for video testimonials from people, from students of mine, whatever course you happen to have taken, if you feel that there's been value in it, any video testimonial, you just have to take your cell phone, do you know, turn your phone on the side so it's a wide angle shot. And uh, that would be great. You can email me at Stefan, S-T-E-F-A-N, at studioweb.com. We could set up a, a cloud drive drop off or something. I'm putting together a montage of video testimonials as, because, as you know, video testimonials are the best. And yes, when you're in business, you have to promote. It's always something I've been reluctant to do, but I've come to, uh, to accept it and embrace it. So yes, I'm looking for video testimonials from students, people who have found value with the Studio Web courses, whether it be the WebStack courses, the Python course, the freelance course, entrepreneur course, what have you. I'm also going to be releasing videos of some of my heavy hitter students, people who have reached really high levels, started successful businesses, and so on. So right after this video is the first uh, testimonial from one of, my, uh, one of my first Studio Web students going back several years. All right, we'll talk soon. And thanks if you do send out a video testimonial. But if you don't, I understand a lot of people are reluctant. I am going to be creating, again, a montage of video testimonials. Ciao. Yeah, so my name is Roberto Cipriani. I'm co-founder and CTO at Great Slam. I run an online education company helping make education more equitable. Absolutely, Studio Web gave me the foundation in my te technology career right now. Once I sort of got comfortable in uh, HTML, CSS, and PHP, I started doing some work for Steph, um, and that included building part of the Studio Web platform. Studio Web platform is great. And I think that it definitely gives you everything you need to get a job or to start your career as a freelance web developer. I hope you liked today's vlog. Um, I'm doing a lot more shots on the balcony because I'm going to be leaving this place after several years. Even though I like it, it's got one of the best views in the city. It's a prime, prime location. But um, I decided I'm gonna get a new place downtown, right in the core of the city so that I don't have to uh, I don't have to put on my shoes to go get a coffee. I can just go down my flip-flops and get a coffee at the local Starbucks or something. That is my dream. That is my dream.